So guys, I'm gonna go through the harsh realities of being an entrepreneur and business owner. And first I'm gonna go through the benefits and they're awesome. And if you get excited and enjoy the benefits of what I'm gonna tell you, you have to wait and listen to the rest of the video, the second half, where I go through all of the downsides. Because if you want these benefits, you need to understand these downsides. So important or it is not worth it. And if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, comment below, okay? Number one, the benefits. You're your own boss. So you don't have to call anybody to take off or to go work in another location or take the day off early. If I wanna wake up tomorrow and just go work in the Virgin Islands, I could literally do it. I could text my one of my admins, they could book a flight for me, get a hotel real quick, and I can literally go to the Virgin Islands and go work there. If I feel like working on the West Coast next week and setting up a bunch of meetings there and doing all the things I need to do for my company in the West Coast, I can do that. I don't have to call someone. I don't have to give them a story. I don't have a, a certain amount of days that I'm allowed to take off and just do whatever the hell I want. Now, there's a misconception that just because you're a CEO and entrepreneur, you're gonna work less. Full transparency, if I only work 35, 40 hours in a week, I would feel like I'm working a part-time job. I pretty much do something for my companies, for my brand, six to seven days a week. Most, I would say seven days a week. So it's very normal for me to work 70 to 85 hours in a week. It just feels normal. I'm always doing stuff related to my business, right? Now, when it, when it comes to things financially, if you can create an extremely successful business, whether it's a small business, medium-sized business, or a large business, there's gonna be times where you're making so much money that it literally feels illegal. I'm dead serious. It does not feel, it, it's almost confusing. You can start making what people make smart, educated, with unbelievable jobs, like those type of people. You can start making what they make in a year, in literally a week or two, or sometimes a month. Multiple six figures. There's been times where I, I told this to some of my friends I'm really close with, because I don't, I don't like talking about these things too much unless I'm really close with you, because most people just want to understand it, and I don't want to ever feel like I'm bragging. But you will reach a certain point financially if you're really, really, really killing it. I mean, like absolutely killing it. Where almost everything in life becomes free because your income becomes so much higher than people's normal daily expenses that it basically feels free. There was a point in time where I remember telling this to someone in my family and I'd go visit him, go have lunch, whatever. And I go, man, it's like everything costs $10,000. Like, what do you mean? It's like every single day I have to pay someone $10,000. Whether it's a sales rep, whether it's a tech company, whether it's a contractor, whether it's an issue, whether it's legal, like just everything costs $10,000, sometimes even more. And so what is a $200 dinner? What is me going and let's say I'm with a group of seven, eight people. And of course, everyone's thinking that they're going to split the tab up three, four, five times. And I just pay the whole tab and I don't even care how much it costs because I know it's nothing crazy. It's probably five, six, seven hundred dollars. It just feels free to me. And that's what kind of starts happening when you have a really, really successful business. I mean, there's been times where I'm saving more than 70 percent of my income and investing it and everything feels free. I can do literally almost anything. I mean, I can't just book a random private jet or buy some huge boat or you know, buy some crazy thing, but when it comes to travel, hotels, food, any like basic item that I would want, it basically feels free. It's the weirdest thing ever. And it is so confusing because it, you kind of wake up and you're like, I've been, told a lie my entire life. Like, I was told since I was eight, nine years old that I had to go to college, that I had to get a job at one of these places, that I had to live in this area, I had to follow this path. And then now 
I'm making more than those people make in a couple weeks? What? I mean, it is one of the most mind-blowing experiences ever, and it changes you forever. And so those are the plus sides. Um, you also get to meet and network with some of the most successful people in the world. Uh, some of these people that have DM'd me and then now we've become friends, some that I've had on my podcast and I'm going to have on my podcast. It was crazy because I was five, ten years ago listening to these people on YouTube. I was watching these people on Instagram. I was listening to you know, their speeches, their podcasts. I was reading their books. And now they like my content. It's crazy. They want to hang out. They want to collaborate on stuff. And the only reason that is is because entrepreneurs get entrepreneurs. Like until you've had a payroll. I'm not talking about like a solopreneur, which I'm not knocking that. That's a good gig to have. But until you've had to have a big payroll that you have to get out every single week with not tomorrow's money, but today's money. People who have families, they have kids, they have all these different things. And you're doing those things every single week. And you're proving those. And it's 50,000, 100,000, 80,000, 60,000, 200,000. It's hard to know what that really feels like. Someone commented recently, and he was, and obviously he hadn't been an entrepreneur, but I was talking about these kind of things. He's like, you know, you just act like normal people don't know what business expenses are. And it's like, yes, like everyone knows what a business expense is. Everyone knows that a business has costs. But you can't truly fathom or understand how much they are until you've truly lived it. It's almost as if every single day someone is stealing thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars out of your bank account and you don't know why. That's what it's like running a business. You wake up and you had, let's say in your business checking account, let's say you had $100,000 in there. You suddenly have 83000 and the day before you had a hundred thousand, you're like, what? And all of a sudden it's like DocuSign, six thousand dollars. This thing, three thousand dollars. Legal, four thousand dollars. Amex, three thousand dollars. And you're like, what? And then all of a sudden the next day it's like payroll taxes, eighteen thousand dollars. Auto drafted right out of your account. I was like, what? It is one of the craziest experiences ever. The way you think about money changes forever because everything multiplies. It feels almost as if you have a family, but you have like 50 kids and all of them are also paying rent and have other kids. It is the craziest and most mind blowing experience ever. But that's why the really, really great entrepreneurs that provide jobs and stimulate the economy, they deserve to be wealthy because they're impacting and benefiting so many different people. I mean, if you think about it, if you have 40 employees, all those people have families, that might be 150 to 250 people that you're impacting and that you can dictate a lot of how well or how bad their lives go. You know, if the business doesn't do good and you have to lay off people, you're directly affecting a lot of people and their kids and their family. If the business does amazing, you're also benefiting not only the economy, but their kids, their family, their friends, and all the people around them. So you have to be able to handle that burden. And so while we all want those things at the beginning of the video where, you know, the big money and being able to travel and being able to do all these things and network with all these really successful people, that sounds amazing. But can you handle what it takes to handle all of the pressures? This is what's going to be tough. And this is what I want you guys to think. You know, do I really want this? Think long and hard. Do you really want these things? Do you want unbelievable stress and massive problems? When you run a company and you have tons of people that work with you, work around you, that you contract out, all those different things, the stress and the problems multiply massively. Because if it's just you and you have your job, yeah, your, your car has a problem, so you got an $800 issue. That sucks. Don't get me wrong, that sucks. But picture you got now 40 and 50 people. They all create and cause problems too. And even if you're doing everything the right way, there's gonna be issues that happen. You're gonna have customers that make up that, oh, I never wanted this product, I want a refund. For example, I remember the first year of our company, I remember I took, 
I was on vacation. I took my family on vacation. We were in Colorado. And I'm about to go skiing, and I look on my phone, and we had like a seventy-five thousand uh, dollar solar install. I think it was in Dallas, and the crew didn't know. So, for example, project coordinator did not alert the install crew that the HOA wasn't approved yet. What was odd is that the HOA approved to get that project installed that morning. But they started installing it before the letter came in. So next thing you know, the HOA president was across the street, the most Karen you could ever imagine, screaming and cussing and yelling at the installers, getting them to stop. We're like, ah, damn, we're going to have to reschedule. No big deal. But then she convinces the homeowners that they should cancel. Next thing you know, not only do we have to uninstall a $75,000 system, but we have to then repatch their entire front roof. This was a huge house, so that costs another 10, 15 grand. So we went from making money, our sales rep making a ton of money, to losing not only $75,000 of revenue, but having to spend an extra 15 or 20 just on the roof, plus the extra labor, plus all the extra problems that we had just to save a lawsuit. This was a small issue that a project coordinator didn't click and send one tiny message that cost us almost $100,000. That was just one project. Is it complete bullshit? Of course. Is that annoying? Yes. Is that not fair? Of course it's not fair, but it doesn't matter. That's what it's like running a business. You will have people that you have to fire that are crazy, that will say things, that will make up things. You'll interview them and you will swear that they are the sharpest, smartest, most intelligent, most incredible people you ever meet. And they'll start their first, second week and it's like a complete alter ego. They'll make up lies, they'll say things. I mean, it is crazy. And so if you don't have really tight niche contracts that state what happens if it doesn't work out and all the different things that you have, all the legal things that you need to have in that new hire contract, you could get exposed. You could get sued. You could deal with them commenting and, and, and posting bad things about the company that's not even true. And you're gonna deal with that. And the one thing that I've learned is that if people are involved, you're gonna have problems. It's one, people are imperfect, but they're emotional. And a lot of people have egos involved. And when they're not successful, it's hard for them to process that it could be them. That maybe they just didn't work hard enough or maybe they weren't good at this specific thing. And so they're gonna go after you. They're gonna make up rules. They're gonna write bad reviews and make up things. But you have to be tough and you have to be able to deal with those things. You have to defend the company. You have to defend your name. You have to do all these different things. The next thing that you're gonna deal with is you pay today's bills with today's money. So it doesn't matter if you're about to get funded or you're about to get paid out or this big deal is about to come through in a couple weeks. If you have $100,000 worth of payroll and expenses due on Friday and you only have $98,000, that means you are missing some type of that capital that you need to pay out on that Friday, which means it doesn't matter if you're gonna make a million the following Tuesday, you have to pay today's bills with today's money. Cash flow is a mother effort. It is a different beast and everyone thinks that they know what it's about until you experience it. You could be a profitable business, but if the cash is not coming in in a timely manner, you will be screwed as a business. Early on in the first year, we had this issue where the finance company that we we're working with, they were not funding these projects until it reached a certain point and the deal was submitted in a timely manner. But because there was such a massive influx of deals, filing for funding on these projects was getting delayed a week or two. So even though we had to pay out reps, even though we had to 
pay for marketing and leads and all the other expenses, salaries, all the different things associated with our operation, because all of these projects, the funding was delayed, we were extremely profitable. We were continuously losing money. The reason why was not because we were struggling as a business, not because um, you know something unfortunate had happened to us, but because of cash flow. So what I had to solve is I had to go figure out and work with the finance company, with our installers, with our project coordinators, with our finance people, and figure out how to streamline that process so as soon as that deals in, we can start getting funding so we can cover our costs. And so I had to learn this. And sometimes, no matter how great of a CEO or business person you are, sometimes that's just the nature of the beast. And the only way to actually fix that issue is through churn, through basically closing so many deals and doing so much business that even if you wouldn't have been profitable with 50 deals, if you do 200, even with that issue, you're gonna still be profitable because of cash flow, because of the amount of money that's coming in. And this is why it's so difficult for small businesses to stay in business. For example, in the last couple of years, we have an inflated economy. So if you look at Wall Street, you look at the stock market, it looks like everything is great. But Wall Street did not get hit in the last two years. Main Street did. Because all of their costs increased 10, 15, 20%. And they're not sitting there with an inflated economy. They don't have so much scale and so much infrastructure and so much control that they can just eat all these costs and control the market. They're reacting to everything. If Facebook changes something, if Google changes something, if the lead or marketing cost increases 40%, they're screwed. And so that's what we're seeing with so many different businesses. So if you guys want to make so much money that it doesn't feel normal, if you guys want to be able to work and travel and live anywhere you want, if you guys want to network with the most successful people in the world, you need to handle immense pressure, immense stress. You have to deal with problems. You have to deal with people spreading lies, writing bad reviews about you for no reason. You have to deal with all of these issues. I saw, and one last thing before I end is, I saw this tweet and it said, imagine you start working. No matter what you do, no matter what happens, you make the same amount of money and it's an unbelievable amount of income. And imagine getting off work at five o'clock and a problem happens. It's a massive issue in the business and you don't have to answer your phone and someone else is just gonna do it for you. Imagine you ask to go on vacation, you turn off your phone and no matter what is happening in the business, you don't have to do anything. Imagine if you could create that world. And I'm reading this and I'm like, damn, that sounds great. I've never experienced that before. Maybe I need to get better as a CEO. And then I, it scrolls down and it says, this is what it's like working at a company. And I'm like, oh my God. It's like being an entrepreneur is not that. I have to take that call. I have to find someone to take it. If you're working somewhere and you're making great money and you can do those things and be off at five and travel and do all these things, people keep knocking it, but that is not a bad thing at all. That is freedom right there in some capacity. So if you guys wanna be an entrepreneur, you have to be honest with yourself about what is going to come with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd like to just be raw and authentic and tell you guys the truths of all these different things. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment below. Um, and definitely pay attention because guys, I'm gonna start releasing more of these, probably one to four of these a month. And just tell you guys the honest truth about business and how to be successful in it and how you guys can improve your life. And if you guys like more content, content like this, check out the Grant Mint podcast. Um, I'll put the link below. And other than that, hope to see you guys soon. Bye, guys.